Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so I have Itamar Cohen on the line, and he's co-owner and CEO over at Zip It. Itamar, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me. All right, so uh, I I love today's topic. So the importance of originality in business and life. I think originality is something that we do not talk enough about. So I think this is going to be a great episode, Itamar. Um, But before we get into what that means, I want to go a little bit further into Zip It, the Zip It story. So tell me a little bit more about why you created the business. Sure. So uh, Zippy's story started basically in 2004 with an idea of an Israeli student. This is the reason for the funny accent that you hear from me. I decided to live right now. And uh, Ishai, the student, basically received a mission from his college professor to take a two-dimensional object and transform it into a three-dimensional item that can be mass-produced. Mm. So he played with different raw materials. One of them happened to be a zip. And by creating few manipulations in the sewing of the zipper, he created uh, one long strap of zipper. That once you zip it, and that's the reason for the name zip it, once you zip it, it becomes a tentative or a bag. So that's truly how the idea behind zip it started. Uh, from that, basically, we took the, the concept, the idea, and we started to, to think, okay, what can we do with it? So, cool, it's a great idea, but hey, how can we monetize it? How can we, what do we do? With it? And the first mission in our search was actually the U.S. market. Mm. We wandered in the different, you know, aisles of Walmart and Target, and we happened to look at the pencil case and back to school aisle. And when we look at the aisle, one thing was very clear. A lot of the products in this aisle talked about innovation, about creativity. But all the products were really dull and boring. There was nothing mm. creative about it. And we said, okay, we have something very, very unique here. How can we sell it, you know, on a mass scale? So we understood that in order to make that product, uh, Accessible to the mass, we need you know, to to convince these mass retailers that they need to carry Zipic. Now, the big challenge was that the product was much more expensive because it's made from mm-hmm. zipper, and that basically was the first thing that we, we had to overcome. Um, to make a long story short, uh, the first um, First company, first retailers to give us a stage to give us the chance was Office Depot back in 2009, mm-hmm. and um, we've been back to school in you know, over 10,000 stores. Sales through was amazing, and from then we basically every year we added more and more retailers up to a point that we today cover about 25,000 stores during back to school. We account for about 10% of the pencil case market, and Besides, you know, the U.S. market, we work in about 30 different countries. The second largest market for Zipic is Japan. And, you know, that's, that's what we do now. The core belief of Zipic, what stands in the very core belief of our company, is the concept that uh, child imagination, 
child creativity, the sense of marvel that children have, um, they all must be nurtured and encouraged. So it carries over into adulthood. That's the concept behind it. Is to try to make each and every product smart, fun, colorful, in order to encourage users to keep that magical, childlike essence alive in kids, uh, no matter how old. Wow, what an amazing story, um, and what amazing growth. I mean, it's kind of blowing my mind that, that like, because uh, you think about it, so Zip It, I mean, not not that old of a company compared to the entire pencil case market, right? <laughs> like, obviously. Um, so the, for you to be able to take that kind of market share in this short amount of time, I mean, what do you think, like, is some of the reason that you've just kind of, like, it's just it just keeps growing? You know, I, I think that if I need to, to pick just one thing, I would say that it's the startup atmosphere uh, we are able to maintain for many, many years. Uh, you know, Israel is known for its uh, startup scene, tons of different high-tech uh, companies. In my background, I, I worked with different high-tech companies in Israel. The last one was Checkpoint, which, among others, invented the firewall, which are computer and mine. And the, the atmosphere, keeping, you know, a company that is 40 years old, trying to make it truly nimble and lean, mm -hmm. in my opinion, can be achieved only by, you know, making sure that the mindset of the team members is, is very similar to the mindset of a new startup that is just, you know, one year old. I once, I once uh, called it insecure overachievement, as you know, the, the philosophy. <laughs> Just make sure that uh, you, you know you never feel too secure in your position. Always, you know, constantly check yourself. Uh, you know, to speak with your retail buyers, if you speak with end customers. Just to make sure that you know we as a company meet their needs. We overachieve actually their expectations, and you know, even when we celebrate internally victories always a very short celebration and very modest uh, celebration just to make sure that you're always, you know, very high-tuned and working in the phase and the standard that we set to ourselves, you know, day one. No, I love it. I, I love it. And, I, and I'm and i looking at the website right now, by the way. So zip it. It's just it's just dash zip it dot com. And it's absolutely amazing. Like, I want one of these things. When you said when you said like uh, it keeps like, it keeps you like, you know, it keeps you you know child at heart or it, it keeps it's fun and it's engaging. Like, these are actually cool. Like, I'm going to order one of these. I see you have a Black Friday sale going on right now. I'm, I'm, that, that Black Friday sale won't be going on when this is released, by the way, for the audience, just to be clear. So, uh, <laughs> But I'm, I, but, but so if you're, so, because it takes a little while to edit, but uh, I highly encourage even the adults out there to go check this out because I'm like, oh, I want one of these too. These are cool. Um, so no, I love it. I mean, I love the product. I love what you're doing and I can see why it's grown and, um, and the heart behind the company, of course, what you and your team are doing. Um, but I will ask, so, I mean, uh, if, if you could go back in time and if you could, you know, really give yourself a couple of tips, because, oh, I know you're in a big startup, you know, community and you and, you know, we all learn from the bumps and the bruises, the ups and the downs. If you could go back and give that that young Itamar that's just getting started some advice, what kind of things would you tell him? Oh, there's many things I would say to young Itamar, but uh, <laughs> one would be for sure um, making sure that you keep calibrating your business uh, compass, if you will. Mm -hmm. Just go very, very deep in a very early stage uh, and try to answer what I call fundamental questions for every business. Like, what is, you know, what is that you want to achieve? And why do you want to achieve that? And how you think you're going to do that? Now, not always you'll have just one answer, and a lot of times, you know, opportunities might pop up and present themselves, and you, you basically they will present a huge uh, temptation to take a different path. It happens, you know, to every business cycle. Uh, just trying to, to stay strong and, and focused while not being too afraid to go back and, and answer these questions again and again and again. I think is is key. So that's maybe one thing. Um, the other tip I would say is make sure you join your team the best 
possible people you can. I mean, if there's one thing you can never, never compromise on is the quality of your team efforts. And, and I've experienced that, you know, as good stories and as uh, bad stories. <laughs> but, mm. you know, try to hire the best people your budget allows. And if your budget doesn't allow it, make sure that, I mean, it's worth it. Just make sure you have the best people. And awesome. the last tip I would say that um, try very, very hard as a young company to get uh, you know, decisions that are data driven. You know, for sure in, the, in what I call the low tech, uh, in the high tech, uh, I think it's almost given, but for low tech uh, business to be data driven, uh, it's very hard. It's not easy. And I think. Mm -hmm. uh, if you make sure that you have a strong operation and financial systems in place that can provide you with accurate data in order to get decisions, uh, and try never to assume. That's something that I've learned along the years that you know, when you assume, uh, it's very dangerous. And if you try to base your decisions on concrete data, concrete information that sometimes can contradict your gut feeling, I think this is this will really be good. That's awesome. I think that's great advice, Edamar. And I'm and as I was looking on the site, I'm like, man, I might have to do the Monster Pots three pack. I mean, the site's just awesome. Everybody <laughs> needs to go check this out. I'm like, there's like, there's a pink one, a blue one. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, oh, I might get one. Of, my mom one of these things. She'll like it. They're cool. <laughs> so I think this is I think it's great, Edamar. And uh, it really is truly amazing how you've managed to grow the company, um, stay nimble, and and really, in as you mentioned, in the low tech. Um, in the low-tech business to really be data-driven and to be able to accomplish what you have. I mean, it's just a great story that I'm happy to bring to my audience. So, uh, Itamar, if somebody is listening to this and they want to learn more about Zipit, the company, obviously if they want to purchase the product or anything else, I mean, what's the best way for my audience to do that? So you mentioned earlier in our call on uh, our website, and it's just um, minus on hyphen zipit.com, or you just can Google Zipit will be probably the first thing that will appear on your screen. That's truly the best way to learn more about us and what we do, uh, see the products, and you know, eventually become one of our customers. We'd love it and really appreciate it. Fantastic. Well, Itamar, thank you again for coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure um, talking to you and bringing this story out to the audience. And uh, to everybody listening, definitely, uh, if, you're, if you're a first-time listener, hit that subscribe button. We want you to come back and hear some more inspiring stories just like this. Um, have some more great guests coming up for you. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, hit subscribe on that button there. But more importantly, leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on also. And Itamar, thank you again for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. Appreciate it. Thank you.